What if I told you one of the oldest, most prestigious tool manufacturers in the U.S. is changing how they approach the American market, like taking a 180. This is huge. Nobody else in their class is doing this. Let's jump into it now. Of course, we're talking about SK Tools. SK Tools, they've been around for over 100 years. They've been making professional grade mechanics tools on par with Snap-on and Mac and Matco and the like. And they, unfortunately though, in the past, you know, 30 some years, 40 years, they've been riding the struggle bus. But for those of you who don't know, let's give a quick history, exactly what we're talking about, all right? So again, SK Tools, professional grade manufacturing over 100 years, they have, uh, They've been doing, you know, a lot of great stuff with, with hand tools for mechanics. Going back, I mean, as far as I can remember, this is like the first tool set I can remember seeing from them. It's the standard, like, you know, uh, half inch with, the, and this is what they got, they were made famous for, is the round-headed uh, ratchet there. Uh, also coming in the boxes with the green hammered kind of finish there. And uh, they they were in the tool truck, or actually still are. You can still sign up to be an SK franchisee if you want, but they're really rare to see anymore. Uh, but they were part of the tool truck, you know, trade along with uh, Cornwell and Mac and Matco and, and Snap-on. They were the probably the low hanging fruit there, but they were still doing it. Made in the USA tools. Well, unfortunately, in 2021, we got the news that Great Star Tools. Uh, USA, but of course, this is a Chinese-based company, acquired SK uh, Professional Hand Tools and that there was going to be, <laughs> needless to say, huge changes that were happening over at SK. Now, Great Star had, uh, they own a lot of different brands. They're actually a, a, one of the largest tool manufacturers in the world. Some of the brands that they own that you may use and you don't even know about Arrow, of course, SK, ShopVac, which they bought earlier that year, I believe, uh, Lista, Duratec, Goldblatt, WorkPro, Pony, uh, some Sheffield. There's a lot of really well-known ones out there. Now, ShopVac was the one that they had bought, as I just said previously. So what they did was to consolidate all this stuff was they shut down all the existing uh, manufacturing that had been owned and run by Ideal. They pulled out of that and they moved everything to the Pennsylvania manufacturing that ShopVac had had. So ShopVac had this huge factory in Pennsylvania and they took about uh, a half to two thirds of that and they shipped it overseas. They kept some of it in the US, but a lot of it went overseas. And they took that extra space and they moved SK into it. And we were hoping, we were praying that maybe this meant that SK manufacturing was gonna stay in the US. Unfortunately, that some of that happened, but not all of it, okay? Uh, we do still see a lot of stuff on SK's website showing that it is, in fact, made in the USA. And the prices, of course, you know, <laughs> match that kind of setup. But then we saw some other stuff that, again, is in that kind of pricing. But when you look at the tools, there's, you know, as I've always said, if it's made in the USA, any manufacturer is going to, you know, scream it from the hilltops they're going to emblazon usa on the on the item they'll probably put a big american flag on the packaging they want you to know that the part of the reason this thing costs so much is because it was made in the u.s with u.s materials and u.s labor we're not seeing that on a lot of their professional grade stuff note i said professional grade that's kind of where this is going so anyway the, uh, I was at the National Hardware Show, and uh, I was having a chat. I was looking around the booth, and, of course, the first thing I ran into was their, uh, their new cabinets here. Now, this, is, this one came out of left field. I'd seen this leaked that these were coming out, uh, but seeing them in person really kind of put it in perspective because they're, they're, they're honestly more of a European-style kind of cabinet. You see this a lot in Europe. Uh, where they have these small modular cabinets. Um, uh, Festool does a lot of this kind of stuff with the sustainer stuff, but that's more for portability. But this is around the shop. Let me show you exactly what I, I saw at the show.
Wow, some of the drawers. Look at this. It's all locked in. Got more locks over here. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing real well, thanks. Just checking out your new cabinet system. All right. I saw it listed online recently. That was okay. kind of an out of the blue item. So this what lets you do the half boxes there. Yep, our bags. Or bags. Got the full drawer down there. Yeah, there's six different smaller modulars with six different setups, whether it's two drawer, three go drawer, garage door style, cabinet. All interlocking and all metal. Now what you saw in a lot of those toolboxes though were these foam sets like this. And these have been out for a while. We've kind of talked about it here on the channel. Uh, at $200, and there's, granted there's a coupon on it, for half drive, that is well uh, that, well into, or at least close to the professional grade. We, I would call this, as far as pricing wise, to be in the value pro to professional grade kind of pricing. It's a nice set, but $200 is more than the average Joe needs to spend. Now, uh, and they have this, you know, in the 3 8 drive as well, coming at 109. That seems a little bit more, you know, in a feasible kind of price range. Uh, and then we got the quarter inch coming in at $99 as well. But if you're looking at, what is that, $400 basically for uh, $410 for all those sets, that's a bit much. Now, when it comes to the pliers, they got a bit better. But here's the thing I had a conversation with the rep there. Because something I saw was besides the foam sets, they had some blow molded case kind of sets and they had individuals on hangers, retail hangers. And I'm like, where is this going? I was confused because it just didn't look like, they, I'll be honest, they didn't look like professional grade tools. They didn't look bad, but they didn't look up to the same level as some of the other stuff. And you rarely see like a Snap-on or a Mac or a Matco hanging with an individual skew on a rack. And he told me flat out, well, that is our prosumer grade stuff. Let that sink in. The 100 and year old, 100 plus year old professional manufacturer of top of the line, you know, pro, you know professional grade mechanics tools is now approaching the retail market. Now I'd had a leak about this before and I'm gonna show you what I saw here at the show. Actually, let me show you that right now, then we'll come back. So I had had a rep from SK. It's actually a third-party company, one of their PR marketing companies that they hire. Uh, anyway, they reached out to me, uh, I think it was a couple months ago, asking if they could send me some of these sets, all right, the, these, these going to retail that were going to be showing up in Lowe's. And at the time, uh, being you know a fanboy of SK, and being a little butthurt about this whole moving everything over to China and having all these Chinese-made professional-grade tools, I, I said, look, you can send me the USA made stuff. I'll take a look at it. Uh, but until you can show that there's a solid commitment, I'm not going to promote professional grade made in China kind of tools. Not that it's, I don't know, maybe I was overstepping. Maybe I was being, a, uh, you know, too much of a fanboy. I don't know. But it seemed to me like I wanted to see this company really step up and back up the talk that they had because they said before that they wanted to make as many of the tools in the U.S. as they could and I saw this going the other way. What they didn't communicate at that time was this was not going to be professional grade tools, that these were going to be consumer grade tools. Now I was told these were going to show up in Lowe's. 
I have I checked Lowe's website. I checked around my Lowe's. I hadn't seen them, but lo and lo and behold, no pun intended. Uh, another YouTuber, uh, another tool guy, Toolhead147. He's a great guy, by the way. You got to go check out his channel. Uh, he's been doing this stuff for a long time. Uh, anyway, I highly recommend him. But he's got a video, and I'll link the video down below, where he's in store over at Lowe's, and we see the SKX frame ratcheting wrench set, seven piece for $45. Now, granted, this is clearance, but that's clearance down from $80. Now I've I've bought like cheaper like gear wrench and the more expensive cobalt stuff in that same kind of price range. So a seven piece set from uh, uh, SK with that X frame kind of design, that's intriguing to me. I would like to hear more about that. I don't know. I'll have to message him and see if he actually bought that set. But this is this is what we're looking at. We're seeing SK branch into two different divisions. There's going to be a separate professional grade line with a lot of made in the USA made tools, but some of them also not made in the USA. But let's put that aside. What do you think about a prosumer grade of SK tools? Would this be something you're interested in? Think about it. You could go down to your local Lowe's and get a great looking set of SK tools. That for me is something I'd have to think about. Let me know what you think. It's the biggest change I've seen of any of the major manufacturers. I mean, just imagine if Snap-on decided they were going to make a bunch of their hand tools overseas and sell them at Home Depot. I think people might go a little bit crazy for that. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Let me know what you think down in the comments while you're down there. Don't forget to chomp the old like button. Smash that subscribe. Ring the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.